Are we living in a simulation? Well, Elon Musk seems to think we are. And you know him, right? He's internet billionaire, founder of Tesla cars, working on a way to get us into space. Yeah, he's a modern day genius. So if he thinks that we might be living in a simulation, should we consider the possibility too? I'm gonna to talk about where this idea came from and the evidence for and against it. But fair warning, guys, this all gets a little bit philosophical. Oh, and I'm happy to hold my hands up and say that I am no expert on this, okay? I've tried to get my head around it because it's a really interesting question, but I'm bound to miss thoughts out. So let's chat about it in the comments because knowing you lot, you're gonna have a whole load of ideas. So put them there. Let's dive in. Elon Musk thinks that there is only a one in a billion chance that we're living in what's known as base reality, the actual real non-simulated existence. He argues that given the advances that we've made in believable video games and graphics in just the last 40 years, one day we'll be able to make a simulation that is indistinguishable from reality. And given that we'd probably then make thousands of these simulations, isn't it likely that we're actually in the future and living in one right now? The history of the idea is really interesting. Musk seems to have picked it up from philosopher Nick Bostrom, who suggests that one of these following three things must be true. One, there are no simulations because throughout the universe, every civilization goes extinct before they get really, really good at making them. Two, there are civilizations out there who could make simulations about people like us, but they're just not interested in doing it. So again, no simulations. Or three, simulations do exist and we're just characters in someone else's simulation. Here's the thing, Bostrom reckons that each of these three scenarios are equally likely. Elon says that he can't see a flaw in his argument, but let's take each one of these. Let's look at the potential responses to them and see if we can work out, is this just real life or is this just fantasy? Scenario one, there are no simulations because throughout the universe, every civilization goes extinct before they get really, really good at making them. It seems fair enough to say that surely we can't be living in the simulation because no one has yet been able to simulate this consciousness that I'm experiencing. Certainly we've never come close to a full simulation of existence, but it seems like a bit of a leap to say that just because we haven't developed that technology doesn't mean that other civilizations haven't. We already know that we're getting better at simulating various aspects of reality like crowd dynamics or physics or materials or fluids, so it does feel attainable one day. Or maybe it's already happened and we're in the result and we just don't know. What about situations two and three? Okay, scenario two says that there are civilizations out there who could make simulations about people like us, but they're just not interested in doing it. I mean, if I was gonna build a simulation, it would probably be a little bit more exciting than this. There'd be flying dragons and none of the rubbish stuff like debt and disease and commutes. So yeah, I guess scenario two is possible. High-tech civilizations would want to create simulations a lot more fun than this one. So this is not a simulation. Unless the base reality is really, really rubbish and the simulation we're in is in fact an improvement on it. That is a depressing thought. That leaves scenario three to judge. Simulations do exist and we're just characters in someone else's. Some people argue that the way that the universe is currently set up makes it seem like a simulation. Even the fact that it seems to run on mathematical laws could be a sign of this. But we should note, as Bostrom does, that the physics in the universe where the computer running the simulation is may or may not resemble the physics of the world that we observe here. And that raises an interesting question. If it is all a simulation, why would computer programs being used to run the simulation need to work anything like they do in our reality? We've been talking about computers, but the idea that we might not be actually seeing all of reality has been around for a long time. Even Plato imagined that the world was like a group of people chained up and thinking shadows on the cave wall were the real reality. Then people like Descartes came on the scene, saying that the only thing we can trust is what we think. Then all other things that we see and physical sensations we feel could be a trick by some evil demon substitute evil demon for super powerful computer and he's kind of talking about the same simulation that we are. At the end of the day, these arguments leave you going round and round in circles. They don't give you any good advice on how to live your life. Bostrom ended his argument by pointing out that even if we do live in a simulation, the implications aren't all that radical. That's because our knowledge of the world is still just as useful as it was before. We have no indication that someone's about to install a dragon invasion mod or anything. Although saying that, just in case, I might go and import a Skyrim sword into this world 
yeah, gonna do that. So yeah, all got a little bit philosophical, didn't it? But if you like that sort of thing, uh, check out my video on the singularity, which is all about computers uh, and machines getting very intelligent. Have a look at that. In the meantime, put down in the comments below, do you think this is a simulation or is this real life? What do you reckon? Let me know.